Right guys, welcome back to the channel. So this is the third and final part really of this little mini series, shortening this chain and fitting a new smaller sprocket on the front. Um, if you haven't seen those videos, I'll put a link in the description down below and you can see how I've got as far as I have. But basically this video, I'll be showing you how I re-riveted this hollow link here. I used the AFAM hollow rivet tool. Basically what comes in the packet is two plates like this and two Allen key bolts like that. This is the link I took out here but I was going to show you using that link roughly how to use it because it's quite hard to show you on the bike because when you're on the bike if I just go back over here essentially if you're using a normal chain tool like one of those ones that's like a, a G clamp you know that you just push a pin out and then push it back in and squeeze it over you can do that on the sprocket here which is quite nice however because this tool you need to be able to go either side of the chain with both bolts you can't really do it on the sprocket because um, you know one of the bolts will be hitting the sprocket so you have to do it sort of in midair either down here i actually did it here wherever there's the most space but not on the sprocket either end so slightly fiddly um but it works pretty well as you can see that you know the two rivets look decent not got a tight spot the little rollers in between turn nice and free and if you sort of i don't know how well you can see from the top there but it's nice and uniform with the rest of them so yeah the tool's done its job what you do is when you first don't take any notice this is the old link but you're on the bike you've obviously put your other chain link over Mine's been cut off, or I cut it off, but you put your other O-ring on, you put your grease, and then you put this cover on like that. And then when you go to put that cover on, it would be quite, or well, that side of the plate, should I say, not cover, that plate, it can be a bit tight to get on. So what you then do, whenever you use this, you always put this plate this side, and it slots in. It's one of the things I noticed was a bit fiddly, because the groove's not that big in here. And when you're trying to sort of slide it in and hold it on there, it has a tendency to just want to, like, move out either side. You can see where when I've done it up a little bit, it, it missed so you're really careful that plate is tucked in you know on the on the heads nicely so get that on there and then first of all when you're just trying to put the plate over you then put this side towards the chain link and because it's got a divot in here the chain link you know the ends of the things want to sit in there like that so basically you squeeze them together so, so you put these put your bolts through here now when you're trying to do this on the bike, as I say, it's a little bit fiddly. Obviously the chain itself is being held in place because it's just sat there over the sprockets and stuff. So it's not quite as fiddly as what I'm making out here, trying to do this freehand. But essentially what you have to do is, you have to slot that in like that. So like I say, you need to be careful that you've got it in the right place. And then you do these up, you, then, you put that spanner on there like that. I think I had it on the top like that actually. So I could hold it, obviously if you depend on if you're doing it underneath, you probably hold it downwards like that. And then you just do these up, quarter, I think it's quarter turn at a time roughly. It does show you on the back exactly how much. And then you just do them up, do do do. I'm just going to do a slight lever because uh, obviously it's not a proper rivet. Right, you can hear then that it actually went through the hole. Even though I've not got a full pin on there, you heard it go clink. So what happens is obviously there'd be an o-ring and stuff stuck in there, but it basically pulls it in so that it's like even to the next one. So you're supposed to slide it over and basically do it up. So when the next chain link's here, you do it up until they're touching and then you know that you've you've pulled it in the right amount. Now obviously this is over the top of the link that's already riveted. You just do it up tight until that plate touches there. And then if you go the other way, see how that notch is touching that plate there? That's basically what you want when you're doing it up. You want to keep pulling the plate in, or the outer, outside the link, sorry, until it's flush against there on each side. So you then take it off and you then use the rivet side. Essentially what you can do now is see, you, obviously I've already riveted it. So the back plate sits across and then you just nip it up until you see it open up and then you undo it. And you go across to the other link or the other rivet, screw both of them in again. So that's what it actually looks like when the rivet tool is actually in on the rivet and it's pulled in tight. See, that's pretty much it now. I'm just going to put the bike back together, put like the cover and the rear set and stuff back on here, and then swap this over and double check the 180 60 for clearance. But I'm sure I've got enough there. And yeah, that's pretty much me done. 